Good evening from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Mission Control as you look live at Launch Pad 6, Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where an uncrewed progress resupply ship atop its Soyuz 2.1A booster stands fully fueled, ready to lift off just 24 and a half minutes from now to deliver 2.7 tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the Expedition 70 crew aboard the International Space Station. Several hours ago, the Roscosmos State Commission met and gave approval to fuel the Soyuz 2.1A booster. It is again fully fueled. It is 10 minutes after sunrise in the Central Asian desert at the launch site, where it's 28 degrees Fahrenheit over overcast skies. The Soyuz scheduled to lift off at 9.25 and 6 seconds p.m. Central Time, which is 8.25 and 6 seconds a.m. Baikonur time on Thursday morning. The uh, Soyuz uh, rocket uh, was, was uh, rolled out to its uh, launch pad on Monday morning. The uh, hangar not far from the launch pad itself at Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. It was hydraulically lifted into its vertical position where fuel and electrical lines were hooked up, data lines as well, as the technicians made final preparations for its liftoff this evening to send uh, the Progress on an automated 34-orbit two-day journey for an automated docking to the aft port of the Zvezda service module. Uh, that will occur in the wee hours of Saturday morning at 12.12 a.m. Central Time, 1.12 a.m. Eastern Time. The uh, Progress, as I said, uh, is equipped uh, and stowed uh, aboard with 2.7 tons of, of, of fuel and supplies, as well as food for the crew members aboard the International Space Station. The breakdown is 5,551 pounds of cargo. That uh, is represented by 3,258 pounds of dry cargo, 1,279 pounds of fuel, 926 pounds of water, and 88 pounds of nitrogen. Again, 2.7 tons of supplies, food, and fuel about to be delivered to the crew on board the International Space Station. That crew, the Expedition 70 crew, is asleep at this hour. They are due to be awakened uh, for their work day about three hours from now, and uh, they'll be informed of the uh, results of tonight's launch uh, once they are awakened and uh, move into their daily planning conference. The Expedition 70 crew is led by Andy Mogensen of the European Space Agency, ESA. He is joined on board from left to right by Roscosmos cosmonauts Nikolai Chub, Konstantin Borisov, Oleg Kononenko, and NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli of the Crew 7 crew, uh, along with Borisov, Satoshi Furukawa of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and Laurel O'Hara, who launched uh, back in uh, September aboard a Soyuz rocket from this same launch pad at the Baikonur Cosmodrome that the Progress will be taking off from just 21 and a half minutes from now. Waiting in the wings to launch to the International Space Station is the Crew 8 crew. Uh, they uh, are from left to right, Alexander Grabenkin of Roscosmos, NASA astronauts Mike Barrett, the commander of Crew 8, Matt Dominic, and NASA mission specialist Jeanette Epps. They are scheduled uh, to launch soon, dependent, uh, their launch date dependent on the results of the launch uh, by SpaceX of a Falcon 9 rocket that is scheduled to lift off at 1.05 a.m. Central Time, uh, Eastern Time, 12.05 a.m. Central Time, atop uh, a Falcon 9 rocket uh, to bring the Intuitive Machines launch. Uh, that will be uh, the lunar lander, the Nova C, that Intuitive Machines hopes to send on its way for a landing on the south pole of the moon on February 22nd. Uh, that uh, launch countdown is proceeding at the Kennedy Space Center uh, on launch pad 39A. That launch will determine when uh, the Crew-8 launch will uh, be lifting off for its rendezvous with the International Space Station. The launch events uh, and the countdown events that will follow here in the next uh, 20 minutes or so uh, will result in uh, the vehicle going on internal power 
a short time from now. Uh, the at the T minus 35 second mark into the countdown, one of two umbilicals that you see buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz booster will uh, retract. And then uh, at about the T minus 15 second mark, the second umbilical will retract to initiate the launch sequencing command that will start uh, with engine ignition. Uh, the turbo pumps will come up to flight speed and uh, the hold down uh, arms will retract and we will have liftoff of the Progress 87 cargo craft en route to the International Space Station. The ride to orbit on the three-stage Soyuz rocket will take about eight minutes and 45 seconds to complete. The first stage scheduled to separate at the one minute 58 second mark after launch, followed at the three minute three second mark by the jettisoning of the shroud, the clamshell shroud that in, uh, envelops the uh, Progress resupply craft itself. At the four minute uh, 37 second mark into flight, the second stage engine will shut down after about two and a half minutes of operation, and the second stage will separate just a few seconds later. Then the third stage engine will operate for about four minutes. Uh, there'll be a skirt uh, separation. That's a skirt that envelops the uh, engine area of the third stage of the Soyuz booster. Uh, the third stage uh, will shut down at eight minutes and 45 seconds after launch. The spacecraft separation will follow just seconds later, and then uh, within seconds after that, we will see the solar rays and navigational antennas on the Progress resupply craft uh, deploy, and Progress will be on its way. Over the next two days, there'll be a series of uh, rendezvous burns to uh, raise the altitude of the Progress vehicle to match that of the International Space Station before we move into uh, terminal rendezvous operations uh, late Friday night early Saturday morning, uh, resulting in that automated docking to the aft port of Zvezda, the service module, at 12.12 uh, 12 a.m. Central Time, Saturday morning, 1.12 a.m. Eastern Time. The uh, venting uh, that you see uh, there on the uh, Soyuz booster is a combination of uh, the burn-off of liquid oxygen, uh, the first stage operating on liquid oxygen and kerosene for the liquid fuel strap-on boosters that uh, contribute uh, to the thrust uh, for the first stage of the progress. Once uh, the progress clears the launch tower, it will arc out to the northeast moving into uh, an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, which is uh, what the International Space Station flies on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The uh, Soyuz booster now on autonomous power. We will be uh, hearing calls uh, throughout the final minutes of this countdown from the blockhouse at Baikonur. About three minutes and 35 seconds before launch, uh, one of the uh, launch conductors will uh, use a key uh, to turn that key into the drainage position, uh, the valves through which evaporated gaseous oxygen escapes from the fuel tanks into the atmosphere. That uh, will appear as white vapor escaping from the rocket uh, as the valves are closed, beginning to drain uh, fuel back into the tanks uh, to make sure that they're at the proper uh, level for pressurization of those tanks. The pressurization of the uh, first stage tanks uh, will uh, occur at about the T minus two minute 45 second mark. And then uh, we will go into the terminal phase of this countdown that will send the progress on its way. All of the progress rendezvous burns and all of the functions of the progress uh, will be automatically controlled by onboard computers, including uh, the final rendezvous sequence that uh, will be controlled by the Corps' automated rendezvous system on board the progress. A similar system exists on the Russian segment of the International Space Station, basically uh, sending radio signals back and forth uh, to update the progress on its rate of closure for its uh, docking 
to the aft port of the Zvezda service module and the rate of closure. Late Friday night, uh, as uh, the progress approaches the International Space Station, uh, the crew will be awake aboard the station and in the service module itself. Russian cosmonauts Oleg Kononenko and Nikolai Chub will be monitoring the approach of the progress. They will be at a workstation that uh, has a joystick, basically, that is called the TORU system, the telerobotically operated rendezvous system that they would uh, take over control of and operate the manual flying of the progress in for a docking in the highly unlikely event there would be a failure or some other problem with the Corps' automated rendezvous system. We're at now at T-minus 14 minutes and counting, the countdown going extremely well. No issues being reported from the blockhouse at Baikonur. The International Space Station is currently flying 260 miles above the South Atlantic, moving from southwest to northeast, about to cross the west coast of Africa. We're coming up on the T-minus 13-minute mark. All of the key events about to unfold in the uh, final phase of the countdown that will uh, result in the liftoff of the progress. Again, liftoff time, 9.25 and 6 seconds p.m. Central Time, which is 8.25 and 6 seconds a.m. Baikonur Time at the launch site. A little over uh, a month from now, on that same launch pad, the uh, Soyuz MS-25 spacecraft will be launched with uh, Soyuz Commander Oleg Novitsky, NASA astronaut Tracy Dyson, and Belarus spaceflight participant Marina Vasilevskaya on board. Novitsky and Vasilevskaya will spend a little less than two weeks on board the station and will come home on April 2nd along with NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara. Good view of the uh, three-stage Soyuz 2.1A booster on launch pad 6, Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Again, uh, it is overcast. We are likely to lose the view of the rocket pretty quickly after launch. Hopefully, we will be getting a view from the uh, upper stage camera on the Soyuz as it uh, makes its way uh, toward orbit. Again, eight minutes and 45 seconds from launch to orbital insertion, followed seconds later by spacecraft separation and then the deployment of the solar arrays and the navigational antennas. Готовность к пуску 5 минут первый. Готовность к пуску 5 минут двигал 2. 
We are hearing uh, that uh, there is a readiness uh, poll at the Baikonur blockhouse. Everything uh, continues to proceed very smoothly as we are inside 10 minutes until liftoff. And another view uh, provided uh, by Roscosmos through uh, the Tsenki Communications Group down in Baikonur, showing uh, the Soyuz booster on its launch pad at Site 31. This is the uh, primary pad from which uh, both Soyuz crewed missions as well as Progress uncrewed missions are launched from. T minus eight minutes, 45 seconds and counting. About a minute and 45 seconds from now, uh, the launch conductor in Baikonur will rotate a key uh, that will initiate all of the final sequencing, basically a ground launch sequencer that you uh, would be familiar with during space shuttle days. All of the uh, vehicle functions will be automatically commanded at that point. T-minus eight minutes and counting. All of the uh, launch preparations have gone very smoothly. As mentioned earlier, the uh, vehicle rolled out to uh, this launch pad on Monday morning where technicians uh, completed all the final preparations. And earlier today, uh, several hours ago, the uh, State Commission met and gave approval to begin fueling the three-stage Soyuz booster. This view now from a balcony camera in the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow, showing uh, the flight controllers uh, who will be taking over control of the flight of the Progress at spacecraft separation. T-minus seven minutes and counting. The automated launch ground sequencer is now in control of Soyuz booster functions. Coming up on the T-minus six-minute mark, the range is clear at Baikonur, no issues being reported. About a minute or so from now, uh, engineers at the blockhouse in Baikonur will activate strip chart recorders on which uh, telemetry from the launch vehicle is recorded for later analysis.
Within uh, the upper stage of the uh, Soyuz booster is the Progress itself, loaded with 2.7 tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the Expedition 70 crew. T minus four minutes, 40 seconds in counting. Soon we will hear the call uh, of a purge. That means that fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines are purged with nitrogen that fire proofs them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. T minus four minutes and counting. The uh, International Space Station approaching the west coast of Africa, again moving from southwest to northeast. At liftoff, uh, the progress uh, will begin uh, its journey to catch up to the station for its automated docking to the aft port of the Zvezda service module in the wee hours of Saturday. Again, uh, you see buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz booster, two umbilicals. The oxidizer and fuel valves uh, we are hearing are now closed as planned. We should be uh, hearing uh, the call for pressurization of the fuel and oxidizer tanks momentarily. That white vapor that you see at the base of the launch pad is uh, additional or extraneous fuel uh, being purged uh, from the rocket so that it is at the correct weight with the correct amount of fuel for its three-stage trip to orbit. Those two umbilicals, uh, the first uh, will retract at about T minus 35 seconds, the second at about T minus 17 seconds to initiate the engine sequence start. Coming up on T minus two minutes. Coming up on T minus 90 seconds. Mark, T minus 90 seconds and counting. Everything in order, countdown proceeding normally. We are now at T minus one minute in counting. vehicle now is on internal power and there is the retraction of the first umbilical. Ground support feeds now terminated to the vehicle. The auto sequence now initiated. The second umbilical uh, is retracting. The launch command now being issued for engine ignition. We have engine start. 
The engine's coming up to flight speed, turbo pumps at flight speed, and liftoff. All engines at maximum thrust, we have liftoff of the 87th Progress Resupply Vehicle to the International Space Station. The vehicle has cleared the tower, roll and pitch program initiated. All parameters are nominal for first stage performance. All engines on the first stage are performing nominally according to the blockhouse in Baikonur. Structural parameters are all reported to be normal, 42 seconds into the flight. The engine's performing normally, vehicle stabilization, structural parameters all normal. Engine pressures are nominal at the one minute mark into the flight. We're less than a minute away from first stage separation. Good pitch and roll program for the vehicle. Arcing out to the northeast. It's chase uh, to reach the International Space Station underway. One minute, 45 seconds into the flight. Standing by for first stage separation. First stage separation confirmed and the launch shroud will be coming up uh, for its uh, separation, enveloping the progress craft a short time from now, two and a half minutes into the flight. This is uh, animation on the front screen of the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov outside of Moscow. You can see the ascent plot on the front board at their control center. At the coming up on the three minute mark, everything uh, continuing extremely normal with all of the vehicle functions, good yaw pitch and roll program, good engine performance now on the second stage. And we have uh, launch shroud jettison. The second stage shutdown will come at the uh, four minute 37 second mark into the flight, about a minute from now. About five minutes and 10 seconds of powered flight remaining. This view now from a television camera on the upper stage of the Soyuz as we are now four minutes, 15 seconds into flight. Standing by for second stage shutdown about 15 seconds from now. All of the uh, booster structures are showing uh, normal parameters. Good engine performance. Standing by for second stage set.
There's the uh, third stage skirt separation. Second stage separation is confirmed. The uh, progress now being raised into uh, its final stage of ascent by the uh, singular power of the third stage engine on the Soyuz 2.1A booster. Five and a half minutes into the flight, about three minutes and 15 seconds of powered flight remaining. The stage three engine is uh, running normally according to the reports from the blockhouse in Baikonur. Launch time was confirmed at 9.25 and 6 seconds p.m. Central Time, 8.25 and 6 seconds a.m. Baikonur time on Thursday morning. Six minutes into the flight, two minutes and 45 seconds of powered flight remaining. All of the uh, booster structures are reported to be very stable. Everything is proceeding normally on the uphill climb to deliver the uncrewed Progress 87 resupply craft into its preliminary orbit. Six minutes, 45 seconds into the flight, two minutes of powered flight remaining. Seven minutes, 10 seconds into the flight. Good pitch, roll, and yaw program for the Soyuz booster, operating normally on the uh, power of its third stage engine. About a minute and a half of powered flight remaining. Again, this view from a camera on the upper stage of the uh, Soyuz booster that lifted off a short time ago from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, beginning a two-day journey for the uncrewed Progress resupply craft to reach the International Space Station. Third stage engine continues to perform normally at the eight minute mark into the flight. Eight minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, about 30 seconds of powered flight left. We are standing by for third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation just a few seconds from now. Third stage shutdown confirmed and spacecraft separation. We should see the solar rays uh, begin to uh, unfurl momentarily. There they go. And the confirmation has been received of a normal solar array deploy, as well as the navigational antennas. A flawless ascent uh, from the launch pad to its preliminary orbit for the Progress resupply craft. Eight minutes and 45 seconds from launch to orbital insertion. Everything went by the book.
This view now uh, from the uh, external television camera on the progress vehicle with the data overlay that uh, you should be familiar with at this point as uh, the initial systems of the progress are being tested by the flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov outside of Moscow. In the next few hours, there'll be uh, two DV burns, delta velocity burns, that will uh, begin the stair-step increase in altitude for the progress vehicle as it uh, begins its trek to match the altitude of the International Space Station, setting up the start on Friday night of uh, the automated rendezvous sequence that will result in an automated docking to the aft port of the Zvezda service module on Saturday morning at 12.12 a.m. Central Time, 1.12 a.m. Eastern Time. All of the uh, progress systems are being checked out and reported to be in uh, good configuration as the progress uh, begins its chase to reach the International Space Station in the early morning hours on Saturday. With the progress uh, now safely in orbit, beginning its two-day journey to reach the International Space Station, uh, we can take a look at uh, a different view of the launch as provided uh, by Roscosmos down at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. This was the uh, replay, engine start, liftoff uh, from launch pad cameras that Roscosmos has available to it, and liftoff as uh, the Soyuz booster cleared the tower, arced out to the northeast to begin an eight minute, 45 second journey to the uh, point of third stage separation and the delivery of the progress vehicle with 2.7 tons of food, fuel and supplies for the crew on board the International Space Station. And back with the view from the external camera on the progress as it uh, begins uh, to flex its muscles and being checked out uh, by the Russian flight controllers in Korolyov outside of Moscow. With that, uh, we'll wrap up our coverage uh, with a quick tease for our rendezvous and docking coverage that will be coming up Friday night. We will be on the air Friday evening at 11.30 p.m. Central Time, early Saturday morning, February 17th at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time with rendezvous and docking, the docking to take place uh, by the Progress 87 cargo craft to the aft port of the Zvezda service module, docking scheduled at 12.12 a.m. Central Time, 1.12 a.m. Eastern Time. So until then, uh, we'll see you back uh, here at uh, the Johnson Space Center as you take a final look from a balcony camera at the Russian Mission Control Center half a world away in Korolyov outside of Moscow. For now, we bid you a good evening. This is Mission Control Houston.